Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Wish. It's dropped on Disney Plus and uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard things about it. Yeah, it's not... I'm expecting fully next week that there will be a press release released from the Walt Disney Company talking about, oh my gosh, which was the number one streamed movie on its release day for a Wednesday afternoon on a month that ends, you know, or, you know, a day that ends in Y or something like that. I don't know. It's going to be something stupid. They're going to be like putting a thing out saying it's the most streamed thing ever and the bestest thing ever because they have to do damage control as it fa failed terribly in the box office. Yeah, and that's how they'll justify it. Fail. They'll be like, well, it, you know, it failed at the box office, but lots of people watched it as part of Disney+. Plus." Right, so. they're going to, and they're already starting that narrative. Somebody's here like, Wish is getting more positive reception after being released on Disney+. Plus." I'm like, yeah, because this highlights Disney's problem. People are not going to the theater to see their movie. They're waiting until it comes to Disney Plus. So of course they're going to watch it when it's basically free. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's in the pay for their subscription, but if you have a subscription, it's included. It's free. I mean, look, Disney has already trained people to wait for Disney Plus for animated movies, especially if you've got a lot of kids, it's a lot easier. But beyond that, the, the movie was very, very mid. Um, all the critics said it was, it was mid. It didn't look interesting at all. It looked like a parody of a Disney movie. It didn't really look like it was a proper Disney movie. And um, yeah, so here we are. So let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, you're gonna lead this one, geeky, because uh, I, I have not been following Wish. I don't care about Wish. Well. It's interesting because some of the different uh, news outlets, a lot of critics didn't like the movie. And there's yeah. a lot of people who did like the movie and a lot of people who didn't. And if you like the movie, you're allowed to like the movie. I want to start out by saying that. Like, people are like, oh, my God, how dare you? If you like it, that's completely cool. You're allowed to like it. I mean, I'm not going to tell you you can't like it. I'm not going to pick on you for liking it. You are allowed to like it. A lot of people are going to like it. But I'm seeing, like, news outlets like, um, I think it was uh, Decider, they did a thing here uh, about is it worth streaming it or not skip it or stream it? And they said it's an exercise in corporate self-congratulations. And much, at the yeah. end, they said, skip it. Oh, my God. Don't they, even waste your time watching They Wish. told you this, yeah. Wow. And they said they go down here and there's like, stream it or skip it. And they tell you what the movie's about. And they talk about how it's basically by the numbers, very by the numbers. And they said it's sub and canto. Actually, Encanto is pretty good, so Wish is more subtangled. Well, I like Tangled, but you know. Tangled was pretty good. Um, said, said normally the animated feature, you know, you get cute. And they said uh, the the lead actress, lead singer, is like uninspired. The singing, the singing was good, but the rest of it was uninspired. Um, they said the star itself was purely visual, being communicates with actions of her words, and they're talking about. Um, I said there was one self-aware moment in which a Disney movie dares to poke fun at itself. Um, so they're they said it's basically all by committee. It's not very good. And at the end, they said um, those who have seen Disney movies are the target audience of Wish, but those who have seen many Disney movies have already seen everything in this movie. Skip it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what it looked like. It looked like it was just kind of like a Disney movie by AI. Like, hey, give me the blandest Disney movie ever. And, uh, you know, but it's about a wishing star and you just, you know, take off the whatever, put the prompts in and this is what you get. And some people said the animation actually looked unfinished. too. Yeah, that's the that's one of the complaints is the animation. But this movie is like definitely by committee. It was definitely a cer Disney circle jerk. And they're like trying to find everything they can to like, you know, oh, put this, this Easter egg in and that Easter egg and tie it to this and tie it to that. And then they like. You know, you have to remove it out of, you know, the continuity or you ruin canon for a lot of things. But here's another one, the direct. This is as of a couple of days ago. Here's the bad movies or the bad reviews explained. Why is it so bad? And they're saying about people who don't like it. Uh, they said there's an overemphasis on Disney Easter eggs. It has over-reliance on Disney Easter eggs and fan service. They said that uh, it's by the numbers villain. A lot of people are like, but the villain has valid points. He's not really a villain. He's just like misunderstood. Why can't we have the most iconic Disney villains of all time were just evil because they were evil. Oh, no, no. Then we have to walk that back. We have to do Maleficent where we explain her tragic backstory. And that's why she's so bad. 
Well, they're saying, yeah, I know. Chris Pine's King Magnifico, which, first of all, a name, King Magnifico, um, is nothing but an evil man doing evil things for no reason other than being evil. Well, that doesn't sound like it. It sounds like he has some pretty valid reasons for why he does what he does. Um, the songs are forgettable. Now, it depends who you talk to. Some people say they were pretty good. Um, real character arc. There's no real character arc for his protagonist. It's very shallow. It's a, it lacks real character for the Asha character. And they said that it just, it just, it was just shallow pretty much as what it ends up being. Yeah. It just, it felt, I mean, from what I've seen of it, it just looks like product. Uh, and, and like, look, most Disney movies now are product, but this one feels more like product than most Disney product. Does that make sense? Yes. It, that's what it is. This is, yeah. this is like, you know, they're not even trying to hide it with this right. one. And you have to remember too, that this movie bombed at the box office. Oh yeah. The budget for it was 175 to 200 million. And I don't think that included marketing. And it only made 64 million in the U S and Canada and 190.2 million in other territories. So it only did 254 point. Two or six, you ask, million dollars. That's it. Yeah. Wish don't, didn't even, it, 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 it barely went over, it got its budget back. I don't even think it did when you count marketing. Oh, and it, then it, theater shares. It was, a, it was a massive flop. I mean. It lost money. It yeah, lost a lot of money. Like, I think audiences, too, are just, the Disney brand is damaged. Actually, what would have been more appropriate, if, if this movie was supposed to celebrate 100 years of, of the Walt Disney Company, going back to 2D, yeah. Would have been the way and to go. Done well. A, a well done 2D movie. I mean, look, Klaus did it with some some uh, Disney alumni, you know, but like I would have I would have gone back to basics and been like, yeah, let's make let, let's say let's make a movie like Walt would have made. But, you know, let's let's do a, two, a 2D movie and let's go back to that. And that's going to be how we're going to celebrate or mash it up somehow. But do it very, very well, well, a lot of people were talking about the animation and they said the backgrounds are beautiful and look like old school Disney, but the characters themselves are not done that well. Um, they could have made it if they hadn't relied so heavily on let's try to do 100 years of Disney by shoehorning every Easter egg we can think of and just made a story about the wishing star that was good that might have a couple nods, different things, but wasn't like so heavy on that. Right. It might have been good, but that's not what you did. I don't know what you were thinking on this. And then... um. You're thinking, oh, it's easy money in the bank, but it's not. I have some different people, some different comments on Twitter that I had done that kind of sum up people were thinking about it. And of course, since it just came out on Disney Plus, a lot of people who hadn't watched it before are now watching it and they have thoughts. So it was one person finally watched Disney's Wish. It was really bad. <laughs> I kept waiting for them to tell us that the villain was lying about his backstory. But he was just a traumatized dude who built an entire city dedicated to protecting people who got imprisoned forever for no reason. So, okay, so I just got done watching Wish for the first time. It's not the worst thing ever, as some make it seem. It just seems sort of like a McDonald's cheeseburger. It just feels very manufactured to be what you think of when you think of Disney. But it's not the best of Disney's best. Uh, Disney wished the reviews are better. Disney wished the box office performance yeah. was better. But I think this pretty much sums it up. Is it going to be the worst thing ever? Probably not. But it feels very manufactured. It's very, like, you know... Yeah, I don't know how to put it, like, you know, factory, manufactured, everything's the same, boom, 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 boom. And that's, and it is, that's kind of what's is coming out from this. Um, I won't nag on the animation for Wish for being hideous, as the backgrounds, see, are admittedly gorgeous, and reflect a watercolor storybook aesthetic. Uh, the character animation itself is very bland and lacks any 2D distinction besides outlines. Um... Surprise! No one talked about it. Disney's wish looks weird. Motion looked mo-capped. Lighting feels, etc. Feels a decade or two outdated, especially by Disney standards. Yeah, I was side thinking Shrek. Like it looked very Shrekish. Yeah, side characters underdesigned and generic. Uh, anyone check on the production for AI <laughs> on animation? I know a lot of anima AI animators that people had worked for big productions, including Disney ones, had been making comments that it did not look finished. I have to wonder about Moana. Now, they're outsourcing it to Canada, right? They have a, a Canadian studio, but I'm wondering if the AI complaint isn't part of the reason that they took it to Canada because they might be experimenting with AI and uh, Burbank's not going to have it. Mm -mm. It just, could be. I'm just saying. It could be. Uh, Disney Wish looks like a high-budget Disney Plus show. Something about it feels small and rigid right down to the songs. 
Um, was it supposed? Was it supposed to be? I mean, look again. Back to Moana been. two. Moana two was supposed to be a series on Disney Plus. Did this one start out as a Disney Plus movie or show that was supposed to be like a hundredth anniversary celebration? And they're like, yeah, let's just put it in the theater. It could be. This person does a, a huge breakdown of it, which I thought was pretty interesting. They said um, a thread. One, I wanted to like Wish. I thought it had potential to be a really great film with a unique premise and possibly interesting themes. But I feel like the team was trying to do one too many things and couldn't commit to a direction, which I've heard this from several people. The premise uh, and the way the film was advertised promised interesting log lines. I thought were great themes to explore. Origin of the Wishing Star, agree. Be careful what you wish for, I also agree. What if wishes don't come true, etc. This was not the case. It ended up being a story about democracy. Yes, that's that's my look. That is modern day Disney. Mm -hmm. It's got to be political. The right? end product seemed like it was driven by corporate mandates to maximize its appeal over championing a cre clear, creative and heartfelt story. Scenes of actual story lifting are overshadowed by irrelevant pop lyrics, watered down arcs and butt jokes. Oh, OK. And characters that are only tropes of what we've seen from the past, past with very risk-free themes. Even Princess and the Frog had an excellent subplot of Tiana's father's wish not coming true, but he had what he needed. How I wish Wish could have explored that, but it didn't. Um, instead, it focused on merch mascots yes. that contributed nothing to the story. Tinkerbell 2.0, Olaf 2.0, The Seven Dwarfs 2.0, Asha's also on a 2.0 and quirky. These guys have so much screen time while actual story lifting details are so minimized they seem fragmented. Asha's history with her father, Magnifico's backstory, his relationship with magic and character building moments to allow us to empathize are watered down in throwaway lines. The highest stake we see in the movie is, I know this feeling, this is grief. I felt that, but I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad. What is this feeling? It's grief. I don't know. The, the whole movie is just <laughs> everybody's complaining about it because it's just wasted opportunity. And I think I think that's the, the true loss. Like they're trying to get across the idea of loss, but I think the true loss is the loss of opportunity. I, I think with it's a, this film. I think it's appropriate though because this is the hundredth anniversary celebration of the Walt Disney Company, and this is the utter state of yeah, the Walt Disney Company. It is. It's very fitting. This is like the per. I guess Bland, in that way, generic, uh, creating IP to lacking sell in the creativity. Parks. Yeah. You know, Iger's like, oh, we're all about entertainment first and creativity. No, you're not. We're about creativity. And you put this out for your hundredth anniversary. You guys should have done something to try to rival Snow White. I mean, not the live action Snow White. That's a train wreck. But like yeah. animation that was like inventive and art and amazing. And it had, a, you know, I'm not saying Snow White is the best story ever, but you know what I'm saying? Like when it came out, you know, going on a hundred years ago, it was a huge deal. And like you have a hundred year old company and you should go back to your roots and you, and it doesn't mean you can't be, you know, reverent, you can't be diverse, you can't be, you know, you can't put Easter eggs in there. You totally can. But you tried too hard to be, look how clever we are. Mm -hmm. And then you just gave people a pile of shit. And then you're like, you know, if you don't like it, you're a terrible person. But you're right. This pretty much sums up Disney's 100th year and Disney's last few years under the management we've had. Uh, you just said, because uh, what's the saying? Wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which one you get faster. Well, there you go. You got there them both at the same time. <laughs> just them put it's... them together. What do you got? Bibbidi bobbidi poo. poo. <laughs> so, I was thinking it. So anyway, it, I'm, I'm waiting. I think next week we're going to probably get some PR. And I think I'm going to laugh so hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which was the most streamed you know, show ever at launch on a Wednesday after 12 p.m. on a day that had clouds. You know, I'm just waiting for it because, you know, they're going out because they're trying to pull this one out. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know I don't know because I'm looking at this and I'm like yeah this basically existed just so they could sell merchandise at that the is star. What it feels like the star is basically just a, a marketable character. Like it's kind of like kind of reminds me of I can't even say that I was gonna say Sanrio characters, but they actually have a hell of a lot more personality. But I was just gonna say like it looks good on t-shirts and bags and plushies, but tell me what 
the personality of this kid that doesn't really have no one. it's just I'm here personality to be cute. is it likes money i mean the popcorn bucket that lights up was cute i did buy i bought you that we didn't go it see did. the movie I, I actually bought the popcorn bucket I, you honestly could have saved your money but it is cute i think we went to fnaf was that what we went yes to? And I still mean, you, came home, you came home with it and i was like oh yeah, no, but it's it is cute. cute. It is very cute. It's a cute. Character. I wouldn't have bought it personally. But, I would have bought My Little Pony. But well, it's cute. sorry, but the re the reason that that uh, people fall in love with these characters, even though they're cute, is they have personalities. And, and the, well, the star does have personalities. The star, I think, is is actually probably you know they could have done something with it if they had actually tried. But there's all kinds of stories too. The star originally they're supposed to do like a. a um, a version where it was a person, it turned into a person and different things, which would have been cool. And they didn't do any of that. So. Well, that that was um, so basically Disney's version of Stardust. But that, that might actually that I mean, they rip everybody else off. Well, no, I mean, Stardust, I think, is still a better story because they've got the, the witches and all that stuff. And well, they could have know. Disney witches. But we got the hocus pocus. That's right, they didn't. We got the hocus pocus witches, witches that want to eat the star. <laughs> oh my god! But see that that would have been a better. <laughs> You know, they could have done that. They could have done, like, if they're going to go all meta, they should have had, like... Hocus Pocus 3. Yeah, they should have had the Sanderson sisters, uh, yeah, or at least a nod there to them go. or something. But, yeah. I think, it, I think it would have been more interesting than I think It just that. looks really bland. And then you put this up against movies coming out from other studios. And even, like I said, you know, back to Netflix. Like, Netflix, the movies that have been coming out of there are incredibly innovative, and they actually poached a lot of Disney's top talent. When you've got Glenn Keane, Glenn Keane doing animation for Netflix instead of Disney. You've, you've done something mm -hmm. wrong. I mean, the only good thing that people are saying, I mean, there are people who like it, and that's cool. You're allowed to like it. But I think that the reason I like it is because it, it, it's going to feel very Disney. It's going to feel very familiar. Um, it's it, People are upset because it's too much of what you expect. But those who want, you know, typical Disney will probably love it because it's very predictable. Characters are very much like other characters. Um, not done as well as those movies, but it will feel very familiar. And it, it probably is a quirky story. And then a lot of times people like the Disney songs, so they're probably going to like it because of music. There's lots yeah. of reasons I think people are going to like this as well. But I think overall, the general consensus isn't isn't positive. No. Or as positive as Disney would like. But that's that's okay. They will just uh, move on to the next thing. They already have. They stepped right over this. It didn't make, it didn't even, it only made like $250 million globally. And those, the money came from markets outside the U.S. and Canada. They're not even really, I mean, they dropped on Disney Plus, but they're not even really talking about, like, you don't, I mean, do they do, like, a bunch of stuff in the parks with it or anything? Or is it just, like? Not really. They did some. I mean, they, they're they doing some, I think they're, they're doing it with the uh, Flower and Garden. They made topiaries and stuff. But, well, they yeah. always do that. I was sitting there thinking, like, do you remember Strange World? That was just, like, a year ago. And I don't think they did they, anything with Strange they World. They memory hold that movie so fast that it's like, it's just, it's sad. It's just, it's sad. Again, this is a, a great comment on the state of the the, com the company right now. It's just like it 100 years, this is where they're at. So anyway, let's see what happens this week when, when they start putting you know, stuff out about it, but. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.